In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make pixel art backgrounds. If you've seen my previous pixel art videos, you'll now be able to design and animate your own character. Now all you need is a background. I created this happy little frog for a game where he jumps from platform to platform. Let's make a background for it. Step 1. Thumbnail sketch. For this background, I'm going to do a friendly forest where the frog lives. Starting with a small canvas size, I'll use black, white and a mid-tone to explore different compositions. Composition is how things are arranged in a scene. This video is really good for learning the basics, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Let's have a look at these four ideas that I've puked up. It's kind of gross. Being able to go through ideas quickly will help you discover better ones. For the first one, I like using these lily pads as a context for the background. It is the frog's home and I do imagine he would live near or on a lily pad, but the perspective is all off and it won't fit the gameplay at all. Next! I tried a more gameplay matching perspective on this one, but all the lines lead off to the right where the player really shouldn't be looking or even going, so this one isn't it. Next! I like the vertical trees in this one because they help aid the gameplay context of vertical movement, but if most of the game's action is going to be taking part in this area, I need it to be less distracting. So, sorry, no frog house. Ooh. I'm homeless. Next. So I simplified the main gameplay area in this one so it's less distracting. I also made the design more symmetrical because this makes for a more comfortable and familiar composition as opposed to an asymmetrical one like this. I especially like how the river leads the eye to the middle of the screen which is where I want the player to focus. So let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. Step 2. Value structure. It's time to take this design a bit further, this time thinking about proper perspective. Proper perspective. This time thinking properly about the perspective and value structure. Psst! I have some short videos on value and perspective, so if you need some help, go and check those out. To set up my perspective here, I first need to establish a horizon line. Because most of the action is happening in this section and the player really needs to avoid this section, I'll place the horizon line here with a vanishing point in the center to help draw the focus in the middle. Drawing out straight lines from the vanishing point gives me a helpful guide for creating backgrounds with depth and believability. I got something in my eye. Help me. Oh, what is it? Is it a bug? Oh, it's maybe the bright lights. Lights are blinding my eye. Value is how light or dark something is. To avoid having to think about color theory and the value structure all at once, I usually work in value first before doing anything with color. Definitely check out the video I made on values if you're getting a bit lost. I want this to be a daytime scene, so I use a light value range in the top section of the picker to rough out the tree line's background, mid-ground and foreground sections. I make the foreground trees appear darker than the background trees to give a sense of depth. As the trees recede into the background, we lose some clarity and they get lighter in value because of the atmosphere in between. This is called atmospheric or aerial perspective and can be seen in natural landscapes. I exaggerated here to really sell the depth of the image. This is called atmospheric or aerial perspective. It's useful to think about how you can use value contrast to tell the player something. If I take one really light value and one really dark value and put them together, they contrast heavily against each other and it draws the viewer's eye to that area. In contrast, <laughs> in contrast, <laughs> if we put two similar values together, we don't get the same contrast because they're more alike. This can be useful for adding detail without being distracting. So I added some light trees in the background and some dark bushes in the foreground at the bottom. The dark bushes against the light water is a high contrast area, whereas the higher range of values in the tree line is a lower contrast area. This is because I don't want the main play area to be too overwhelming, and I want the lower section to be a warning for danger. Using contrast is nice. Step 3. Colour plan. It's time to add some colour. This is a friendly forest, so I want the mood to be homely, natural and somewhat warm. You can use predefined color palette, color palettes, color palettes. You can use predefined color palettes. You can use predefined color palettes to experiment. There are some awesome ones to try out on low spec, but I'm going to create my own using some color theory. I'm going to use complementary colors of red and green because to me, those are obvious natural forest colors and I want it to be obvious. I usually just pick from the color wheel, but if you're new to picking colors, there's a cool website called Adobe Color, which can help you define a palette based on color harmonies. It's easy to explore colors by simply placing a new layer on top of your value layer and putting it in color mode. This is a common mode in most digital art software. 
So on the value layer, I select the value that I'm going to replace, making sure contiguous is turned off to select all of the value, and then I fill the area on the color layer above. Here's a peasy. It might not look exactly how you want at first, but it's a great base to start from. I keep tweaking the values underneath and the colors on the color layer to get something I'm happy with. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I like it. So step four, clean up. This is the fun part where everything starts to come together. I'm still making tweaks as I go. I removed one of the trees in the center to make that area even lower contrast and therefore even less distracting. It helps to get some feedback or even take a break and come back to it so you can more easily spot any issues with the piece. When I'm cleaning things up, I really pay attention to each pixel placement and the overall shapes in the scene. You may notice that things are mostly rounded. Circles, circle, circle, tri triangle, circle, kind of. This is because circles appear soft and friendly compared to sharp triangles, which can symbolize danger. Check out this shapes video I made if you want to learn more about shape theory. A key element to this background is that it has no outlines. This is a stylistic choice, but one that I think will help keep the player focused on the gameplay. So that is our friendly forest background. To recap this process quickly with some key points, I use thumbnail sketches to get ideas out quickly, staying loose and thinking about the overall composition and context. I use perspective and values to define the structure of the background, aiming for depth and believability. I explore color ideas, thinking about what I want the mood of the background to be. I continue to refine and clean it up as I go, thinking about how the style can be non-intrusive to the gameplay. Using this same process, I came up with some more backgrounds for the game. Remember, these aren't set rules. You can use whatever process you want. This is just a process which I find easiest to use when making backgrounds. I'd recommend learning from multiple different sources and finding loads of different styles so you can come up with your own unique process and style. There we have it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. The links in the description for all of the social media. Make sure you join the Discord too. There are so many people now joining, sharing their work and hanging out and taking part in art challenges. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. <sighs> right. Let's go. And I'll see you in the next video.